Do you come from an activist background? No, my parents are quite the opposite. They were, they were thought hippies were, you know, a bunch of no good, no gooders and, you know, Greenpeace was just a load of tree huggers and yogurt weavers. Was this the first illegal thing you'd done? Um... <laughs> my mum instilled in me a great sense of belief that we could try and fix things. Um, and I think just seeing photos and watching what people were doing made me believe that I could be an activist as well. Throughout history, people have taken direct action, and uh, when they've done it, they've been lambasted and lampooned by people. But subsequently, when you look back, you realise that perhaps they were right to do what they did. Getting into the chimney was fine. We walked through a giant roller door and shut it and turned the electrics off. So once we were in, we were pretty much locked in. The one memory I've really got is getting in there and we'd expected a staircase. It was about the height of Canary Wharf and we had, you know, 50 kilograms of kit. We had rope, water, paint, all of our supplies. Oh, the paint, the paint on the side of the chimney. Yeah, yeah. So what went through your head when you realised that there wasn't a circular staircase going up? Um, I said a lot of naughty words. When we originally communicated it to the coordinator, he was questioning whether we'd still be able to achieve it. So we said we would, but it's going to take a lot longer. And uh, it did. It took nine hours. And it was so hot, because at that point, they hadn't shut it down. So you still have this CO2 going up at 120 degrees Celsius. The ladder with the back scratcher on went up in about 40, 50 mm. meter intervals. So then you had to haul it all up? Yeah. Which you didn't think was going to... You're going to have to do it. No. No. Now, I was based at the base of the chimney in a van. I had a campaigner with me and a press officer, and that's where the hub was for us for the day. Well, it's so kind of like doing a military campaign, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes. <laughs> We had a diversionary team. They went to the front gate. They were holding banners and placards. That allowed other teams to access the site. We had people going onto the conveyor belts. Again, a filthy, disgusting, dirty place. It's just full of coal dust. And you've got some like amazing footage, which was actually police footage that they shot from their helicopters. It, I mean, it was incredible that you were able to access that. Um, someone somewhere's got a bit of kit, and, mm. and you know, that's used from that's time what I to mean. time, yes. Everyone was, you know, waiting for us to get to the top, so we weren't sort of mucking around. We knew we had to, had to get up there. Kevin and Hugh rigged up a hauling system Incredibly arduous, and it took a lot of mental focus, I'd say. Will said it was the closest thing to a man giving birth. He did. <laughs> I don't know if I'd agree with him. Um... <laughs> you haul in these bags, and you look down, and the bag hadn't moved at all. It's just swaying there, and like the pain in your legs, because we were using our harnesses to pull up the bags because it was just too much on, on our arms, especially after climbing up the ladder. So we clipped in and so we're running back. So they like that pain on your legs and then when this bag came out, it was like, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> and then you'd have to do another six. Just going up each kind of level, each step was just knackering and just thinking, when, when is this going to end? As we got closer to the top of the chimney, the, uh, the dust got so much worse, and it's like, you know, carcinogenic, at least four inches in some levels. We lost our mask bag on the way up. So when you're running and trying to haul up the bags, you're kicking up all this dust, Ugh. your face is completely black, you know, it's all in your mouth and your tongue yeah. and your teeth. And I do remember the sense of satisfaction coming out the top. We 
was just kind of pure, soaring joy, like kind of endorphins exploding in the brain, like a firework of adrenaline. It was just insane. We got to the top at three o'clock in the afternoon, and the best bit was that when we came out of the little door, we could see all the people that had locked off the conveyor belts. we could for the first time wave at each other and know that each other was safe and that was that was a really brilliant feeling. We've got a few people on the chimney plane hide and seek with us as we go around. I can see two at the moment uh, but we'll get the camera on it as we come around. Come up. There you go. Oh get out of focus. Stocky build, yellow hat, unshaven, also on a mobile phone to somebody. Because my parents live near there, I gave them a ring and said, you might see on the news that I'm on top of this power station. So, you know, they picked up and said, we know, we've seen it, we've seen it. <laughs> Good afternoon. Environmental campaigners have broken into a Kent power station and are threatening to shut it down. I was like, sorry. Is this the first they'd heard about it? Yeah. They say they're determined to prevent a new coal-fired power station being built. It will be the first to be built in the country for 20 years. Yeah, another one's come out, he's got a white climbing helmet. He's taking photographs of the other one with us in the background, isn't he? Yeah. I just saw some flashes. And then I got up and did the interviews with the media and tried to justify it to the public when we were up there. And of course, this kind of thing is always a bit controversial. You get lots of public ringing into the talk radio stations uh, uh, saying that we're nutters. I believe we can now talk live to Ben Stewart, who is one of the protesters who is still up there. Ben, we can see you up there at the moment, but people across our region watching this, they're angry that you're trying to make this sort of protest, which actually won't get you anywhere, will it? Look, the fact is that non-violent direct action throughout the decades has actually got results. Unfortunately, we have a situation in Britain where our government simply isn't listening to reason. I'm standing right now on top of a chimney that belches out 20,000 tonnes of CO2 every day. Now, that's a shame on our nation, but what's a real shame is that Gordon Brown wants to build a new one of those carbon dinosaurs, and that's why we're up here. We're trying to stop that happening. It took Kevin Hugh quite a long time to rig up all the ropes. We were mixing the paint and getting our kits ready for Kevin and I to go over. She hadn't been climbing long. There's not a lot of people that could just hop over the side like that. Um, I've got bigger respect for her. How big is that chimney? It's either 209 or 220 metres. When you get to that height, your brain can't quite compute that sort of distance. You know, I've never been, you know, on an edge that high before. I was clipped on and just kind of holding the camera over the edge like that. <laughs> Through the day, there was a lot of comments on the website, on the blog. Obviously, a lot of people weren't exactly behind what we were doing. I wired the pictures from the, the top of the chimney, and then they got back to the, the picture desk. And then the moment the picture of Emily going over the side went up, it completely changed people's attitudes. I felt slightly nervous and 